Hey everyone, this is Helena, and today I'm so excited to bring Clayton Olson back onto my channel today. Welcome, Clayton. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes, I'm so excited. I was looking, it's been almost a year since we did our last live stream. So I'm so thrilled for this topic. It's such an important one. For those of you who aren't familiar with Clayton, he is an NLP practitioner and relationship coach. He's in, been in this space for almost a decade now. And he helps people remove their deeper blocks to love and connect with their authentic selves so they can experience more love, more connection, and more intimacy in relationship with really anyone. But today, specifically, we're going to be talking about in romantic relationships, right, Clayton? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Although what we do talk about today, uh, if you if it starts with intimate relationship, it can bleed outward into every aspect of your life. Yeah, this is such an important topic. I've been getting so many questions for this. I don't know if you get them over on your channel, but how to keep a man's energy coming towards you, not just for the first few weeks or months, but really throughout the course mm -hmm. of an entire relationship, even long-term relationship and marriage. And I've heard you talk about this before in a way that I have never heard really anyone talk about. So we're going to be really going deep here and giving this to you in a way that you've probably mm -hmm. never heard before. So I'm so excited to dive in. Hi to everybody watching. Uh, Jack Butler's watching. I'm so excited for you guys to, to all be here. Usually I like to wait till there's about 100 or so people watching before we um, before we dive into the material and it looks like there already is. So <laughs> um, do you want to just, is there anything you want to say before we start or do you want to just jump right into this? No, welcome everybody. If there's any questions that come up during the live stream, feel free to post them in the chat. We'll try to get to as many as we can. Uh, in the short amount of time that we have and uh, really dive into this concept and hopefully uh, unpack a concept or a different way of looking at love and relationships that you haven't heard before. Yes. Oh, hello to everyone watching. Mimi says, love your course, uh, relationship ready. Yeah. Speaking of that, before mm. we get started, um, Clayton and Jack, who's also watching, are so generously offering a free trial of their course, Relationship Ready, six weeks to becoming the one. The link for that is in the description right now. You can get your free two-week trial. Do I have that right? Do you want to talk a little bit about that, actually? Yeah, sure. Seven? For sure. Yeah. So uh, we used to offer it as a six-week course. In fact, we still do. But uh, one of the things that we're doing now is because uh, we want really uh, we want to invite people into a journey with us and give people a chance to kick the tires and uh, dive into the material that we've created. So we've actually extended it over the course of six months. And it, this Becoming the One course is uh, a program where you will learn to create a new relationship with yourself and become the one for you so that you can truly become the one for someone else. Uh, and ultimately find the one. And uh, it goes deep into self-development. It goes deep into uh, your own patterning that you may have uh, created as a child who uh, could create blocks in your life that are showing up now. And our goal is to help you clear the slate, come from a place of feeling whole and complete, and uh, learn to find your own natural expression while you're out there dating and showing up the situations courageous, asking for what you need, feeling empowered and, and brilliant. So we've had about 700 people through the course. 100% uh, of the people that we've surveyed recommend it. And uh, this is the chance to get in and see what everyone's talking about through a two week free trial uh, where you can even join Jack and I for a live stream over the next two weeks in the members area as well. So there's no risk, no risk situation. We'd love to have you in. Amazing. So that is the first link in the description. If you're watching this live, close the live chat, click the little upside down arrow next to the title. It's also in the comment section as well. So we already have 126 people watching in the first four minutes. So I know that you guys are like so excited for this topic. And I am too. Like I said, Clayton talks about this in a way that you have never heard before. So let's jump into it. What's the first thing you have to say on this topic, Clayton? Cool. So uh, this content came about after reading some different material by a guy named James Carr, as well as uh, following Simon Sinek for a little while. He talks about something called infinite thinking versus finite thinking. And although the concepts were mainly in the realm of business development and creating vision for companies, I couldn't help but notice such a strong crossover uh, into the ways that uh, we we play the game of relationship, how we play the game of love. And one of the things that I've noticed with a lot of the clients that I work with, uh, one of the main key pieces where there is a tremendous amount of suffering that is occurring in the relationship is when people are showing up anxious to their connections. They're showing up anxious around maybe getting the next date. They're showing up 
uh, in fear around whether someone is attracted to them, whether somebody uh, it feels the same way. And this theory or this concept of infinite thinking versus finite thinking, if we can actually make the maneuver from finite thinking to infinite thinking, I believe it can solve so many problems and it can create a real miracle in the way that you show up to situations of uncertainty in the realm of love and dating. And it, you know, I, I can say this even as a relationship coach that uh, the uncertainty that one might experience in love and relationships can be so excruciating. Um, it can be more, it's one of the most excruciating domains that I've experienced in life. So I think that if we can apply this mindset, uh, we can really start to access a new level of power. I totally agree. Yeah. I don't know if you can see these comments, but I, people can relate to that. Sandra says I'm extremely anxious and I, I can Beautiful. relate to that myself. Do you want to give some examples of these two infinite thinking versus finite? Like what would that look like in real life? Totally. Okay, great. So I'm going to go through a couple different examples. Uh, you might identify yourself in the finite thinking camp and I'll talk about what it might look like to be in the infinite thinking camp. And so if you find yourself in the finite thinking camp, and you start to feel like, oh, wow, that's me. Uh, I want you to know that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. This is, it, it's a very common way. I'd say the majority of people are trained and culturally brought up to be in finite thinking rather than infinite thinking. So uh, if you can identify yourself again, know that you're not alone and there is a way to graduate out of that. So to start, I'll just talk about what finite versus infinite thinking is. So Finite games are games that have clear rules and where the goal is to win or beat your opponent. Infinite games are the games where the rules are less clear and the objective is not to beat someone else, but to keep the game going. So how does this show up in your dating and relationships? Well, the first way that I see finite thinking show up is when the clients that I work with are overly focused on the result. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to get somewhere in the relationship. They're trying to get him attracted to them. They're trying to maybe get an ex back, right? If I can just get that second chance with this person, if I can just get them to text me back, if I can just get in front of them to have this one conversation, it happens further down the road as well. Okay, maybe I've been dating somebody, but like, what are we? Are we official? Are we boyfriend and girlfriend yet? Can we just finally have the conversation where I can feel like I know uh, what we are in terms of uh, a label. Yeah. And then in a relationship, it can also occur where the woman or the man is thinking around, okay, so now we need to get married. And it, it is the commitment real unless there is a ring on my finger? I don't know, but I need to have the label of being a wife or a husband in order to feel comfortable. So that's the finite mindset in relationship. And you might notice that there, some of these questions have surfaced in your life. And you may also notice as you feel into that, how when we are really goal oriented in relationship, mm -hmm. there is something that happens inside of us. Uh, what I notice that happens inside of me when I slip into this type of thinking is I get really anxious, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I get really concerned about bringing things to the, to the next level. And I have this belief in my mind that where I am is not okay. Yes. Where I am is not okay. And now mm -hmm. here's the problem with this is if where I am is not okay, then my sense of security, my sense of safety is now contingent on somebody else's participation mm -hmm. to help me get to that goal, which has me showing up in the relationship constricted, less confident, less of myself, more outcome oriented, not enjoying the moment and divorcing myself from the present moment or the connection, which is actually where the intimacy in the real relationship exists. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And every time I'm just looking around, I'm just looking at the comments and that everyone sounds like everyone's resonating. As DP says, it looks like anxious people like myself are in the finite mindset. Tina yeah. has a great question. Does it go between infinite and finite? Um, is this something that can, you can go back and forth in different stages yeah. of your life or even moment to moment? How does that work? Yeah, so I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail later when we get the full picture of things, but mm -hmm. absolutely. And the piece that I also want to name is that uh, finite thinking is not something that we want to get rid of fully in our life. Finite thinking oh. has so many wonderful benefits to it. It can allow us to take something that is really large and chunk it down to make it uh, uh, in bite-sized pieces where we can actually move from one step to the next. So finite thinking is great for uh, creating and achieving goals uh, having different mile markers in mind, 
But if it's not happening in the context of an infinite game that you are playing, that's when it leads to, uh, I can't enjoy the journey. I can only enjoy the destination, right? Mm -hmm. I can't enjoy the road trip that I'm taking right now because every destination I get to is where I can finally relax. But mm -hmm. the journey, I'm like white knuckling it the entire way. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's, it's everything I talk about in terms of, you know, mm -hmm. enjoying the process and the unfolding of it rather than feeling anxious and trying to jump to the finish line. I can see where finite thinking would be good for maybe like setting goals or, yeah. you know, going in baby steps, maybe in business or in some other area, but I can see how it would totally destroy a relationship or uh, cause it to not get off the ground in the first place. Do, yeah. do you want to move into the next step of this? Yeah. And I just want to comment on what you said, because I just think it's yeah. worth underlying there. Like I, the finite thinking, the, the re, one of the reasons why we end up bringing finite thinking into relationship is because it can be so effective in other areas of our yeah. life, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. maybe hitting certain goals in terms of the gym, maybe hitting certain goals in terms of your, your work life and your career. Mm -hmm. But when we take that same mode of operating and we apply it to the realm of relationships, that's when things start to get tricky and break down because we're using the finite mindset to try to create in the illusion of certainty in the relationship, um, which then actually comes off as controlling. Mm. Got it. Got it. So it's just, it's an illusion of certainty. It's not that you actually are more safe and secure when you get to a destination, if it's dependent on what someone else is doing or not doing. Do I have yes, that right? Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So mm -hmm. just to that point, Helena, I want to just say this because the, I think to the other side of that same coin here, uh, how does the finite or how does the infinite player approach this? Well, the infinite player knows that they, there is no security in labels right? That somebody could feel something one day and then feel something completely different the next. People have a right to change their mind. Relationships end all the time. Marriages, unfortunately, they end in 50% divorce. So if we just take that into consideration, this is not to take the wind out of your sail, but it's to say that we, if we're putting our sense of security into this like outside label or this goal that we're wanting to get in a relationship, it's a fool's errand. So we have to learn to source the security somewhere else. So the infinite player sources their security in the connection and not the label, not the next step, but they are sourcing it in the present moment of how connected do they feel with that person? And more importantly, how connected do they feel with themselves? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. using any type of maybe a disruption or disconnect that's happening in the relationship that's happening in the dating phase when they start to feel like they're getting off their center or disconnecting from themselves, leaning too heavily, they see it as a sign, a warning bell to come back and connect with themselves. That's the game they're playing. Mm -hmm. The infinite game is happening between you and you more oh, so than okay. you and the other person. Wow. That is so profound. I like, could you maybe give an example of what that would look like in real life? And everyone is totally relating to this, by the way, and saying, how do we fix this? How can I stop? <laughs> um, so we're going to get to We're going to get to that next. But yeah, any, any more examples of this infinite thinking? I love it. I think yes. Yes. And in, in terms of like how to fix this, the first thing I want to say is that nothing's broken. Mm. So just even let, talking about the language of it, if mm -hmm. you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable, um, the first step is actually see this, that it's uh, there's something really brilliant about it and that uh, in many other areas of your life, it works and it's just firing possibly in the in a context that's not as effective as it could be. So just shifting our language of how we talk about this pattern that you may have in your life gives us more access to be able to shift it rather than saying, oh my God, something's broken. Now I need to fix it because that's actually a finite mindset. Mm. A finite mindset mm -hmm. is seeing that there's something broken and now I'm not okay where I'm at. I got to fix it. Mm -hmm. An infinite mindset is to approach this uh, finite perhaps way of thinking with more compassion and saying, oh, wow, God, okay. I've got my whole life to actually uh, come more into rapport with myself and to play this game in a way that allows me to have joy and connection with myself in the moment. So become more apparent as we keep going. Love Make it. Sense? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. That, yeah, totally. Okay. We have, do you want to just kind of get through all the content of this and then take questions at the end? What would you prefer? How would, do you have anything else you want to say on this? Like there's so many great questions coming through. I do. So, One thing yeah. I'm noticing, I'm going to have to disappear for like two seconds just because my computer's about to die and oh, I didn't okay. plug it in. So just give me, do you want to, do you want to say something that <laughs> is something. relative to something and then I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, that'll give me a chance to, to go through some of these actually. Okay. So Edna says, that's a big wow. I love Clayton, how Clayton is explaining the infinite and finite ways of how we are in relationships. 
we have some other questions. We have some good questions coming in. So can a relationship also be compared to inspired action where it's important to enjoy the entire journey or process, or maybe there's no destination? Any thoughts That's, there, Clayton? Yeah, I mean, I, even in that question itself, I can I can feel a, an infinite mindset that's forming right there, right? There, there is no destination. Enjoying the, the, the journey and the process and inspired action. Yes, inspired action, right? Is the action coming from you trying to create a result or is the, or is the action merely coming from who you are being, mm. right? It's like texting somebody because, so just to, to take that concept to the ground level, it's texting someone that you're interested in and reaching out to them because genuinely you feel inspired to do so rather than thinking, oh wow, I, I should text them because hopefully if they respond to me, I'll have a better day. Mm. Yes. Love it. Yeah. I, um, I heard you talk, I don't know if this would be a good time to bring this up, but I feel like it kind of relates to this question and some of these other ones I see coming through. And yeah. in that video, I think I was telling you, I heard you talk about how, how we can be kind of tracking the connection we have with our partner really closely. And when yeah. we feel like this, like flow of love that we may be getting from them kind of stops for whatever reason, it could have nothing to do with us. We somehow feel like we need to modify our behavior or pull back or do something to try to like turn that flow of love back on. And that how that kind of fits into this finite way of thinking. Is there anything, would this be a good time to talk about this? I love the way that you kind of explain that. Yeah, possibly. I'm not exactly sure if it's, uh, if I can go into depth in that right now without taking us too far down a different rabbit hole, but I can, I can name a couple things about that. Uh, the video you're talking about is the uh, people pleasing one yeah. around not hiding your emotions. And uh, it's on the premise that the strength of a connection with somebody is, uh, predicated on how many emotions you allow into that relationship and into that connection. And if you are people pleasing uh, or you have a people pleasing pattern, which many of us do, uh, we're often afraid of negative emotions that we're either experiencing or the other person ex is experiencing because we've equated uh, those maybe authentic negative emotions uh, with possibly being abandoned. That may have happened when we were a little kid, we had an outburst, maybe we were with an unstable parent, somebody that was mentally ill, somebody that was an addict, somebody that just maybe was overwhelmed with being a parent. And there was a, the flow of love might've been cut off or the flow of attention was cut off from us when we were experiencing anything other than pleasant emotions. So then we make an equation when we're little uh, that we bring into our adult relationships that to experience anything that is negative, that is not harmonious is dangerous to love. Yes. And part of uh, us waking up is number one, beginning to see some of the origins of it, realizing it's outdated. It's a strategy that was developed at childhood and that it might not actually apply now. And that being more authentic and being more uh, connected to your experience and being able to express your experience, whether it's positive or negative, actually strengthens the connection. So how that might uh, work with infinite thinking versus finite thinking is that I believe that the infinite thinker, the infinite uh, player in relationship uh, has more capacity to bring their full selves to the relationship because they are set on the vision of being authentic and having an authentic relationship rather than worrying too much about if there's like a momentary disturbance in the connection with the other yes. person. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Does that oh land? my gosh. Yes. Okay. Yes. So she, she followed up. Love everything you're saying. So fascinating. People are related to this so much. Uh, Lisa says this definitely sounds like me. Thank you for going deep, helping with my healing journey. Mm. I'm a people pleaser. Um, one more great question before we move on. What an example yeah. of infinite mindset is when I realize one day I'm having mounds of anxiety and I don't take action with my partner, but I sit through my anxiety and do things to calm myself and sit in it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Sal, I love that. I yeah, think that'd be so a good example of it. Just to pull the essence out of, of what you're asking here, it's uh, when I have anxiety, um, am I offloading it on my partner or am I using it as a doorway or a connection point to come back to myself and learn to develop a new relationship with it? Yes, that is that is much more of an infinite mindset. Okay, love it. Yes. Yeah. And um I want to kind of keep going with the content that's, by the way, for those of you who are 250 people joining already in the first 20 minutes, I love it. Um, click the link in the description to check out how you can get uh, Clayton and Jack Butler's uh, program, Relationship Ready, Six Weeks to Becoming One, totally free. Get a two-week free trial. You can 
click the link and read all about that. So she says, thank you. Um, there are so many people loving this. I don't know if you can see these comments, but do yeah. you, what's, what's the next piece of this you wanted to share? It, I think what would be helpful is maybe giving some more examples. More examples? They're huge concepts. You and, got and it. I know they're really resonating with everybody. Totally. Too. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, 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 the art of this, right. Is taking some of these big concepts that sound great conceptually, but then how do they actually apply them in a real world level? So um, I'll move on to the next one. So uh, here's another way that I see finite thinking show up in relationships and in dating. So if you are concerned with power in the relationship, mm -hmm. so you're thinking who has the power right now? Do they have the power? Oh, they ha have all the power. I've been texting them. Now I, uh, well, hold on. Now they're chasing me and now I have the power. Yes. How can I get the power back? Yes. If you are in that paradigm of looking at the person that you're wanting to build a long-term relationship with where the two of you are on the same team fundamentally mm -hmm. as a power struggle, most likely you're in finite thinking. Mm. So this power dynamic ends up leading to games and emotional dishonesty typically because in the finite thinking paradigm, there is a winner and there is a loser. Yeah. Who's winning right now? Who's yeah. losing? I'm winning. And the part the, the problem is, is that if you're beating the person that you're trying to build a, a team or a vision with, um, you're both losing. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I recognize that sentiment so much in the comments. I think if people are like brand new to some of my material and, and yours as well, maybe this is like the first video of one of ours that they've seen, the questions or the comments really reflect that, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, he was coming on so strong and then it just stopped. What do I do? How do I get him to come back towards me? Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm just getting a little distracted by these amazing comments and questions over yeah. here. Yeah, that was such a great, can you guys relate to that too? For the 264 people watching, let us know. Can you relate to that? I know I've certainly been in that situation before. I mean, if you haven't, let us yeah. know too, because we all have, right? I, oh I, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I slip into this mindset on a, on yeah. a consistent basis. And that's the yeah. thing is like, we're not, we're not trying to be perfect here. We're just realizing that in, in some of these places where we feel confined and we are experiencing suffering where there's no way out, um, what I'm hoping that this uh, video can do is to just show you that there is a, you're at a crossroads. You, you have a choice in the moment of how you respond to it. So we're distinguishing another path for you to play with and uh, allow yourself to come back to you because that's mm -hmm. what really the infinite mindset is doing is it's coming back to yourself, connecting with yourself because you can control the variables there. And that is a, a game that you can play your entire life, whether you are single or in a relationship or the mm -hmm. world is crumbling around you. That's the beauty yeah. of the infinite mindset is allows you to metabolize uncertainty in a way that has you build a, a, a fortress within you. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's saying, yes, definitely. Absolutely. Your insight is great. So I know everyone can relate to that. Can you give some more examples like that? Yeah, totally. Um, maybe so the just, finite and then how to move, use it to move towards the infinite. Exactly. Yep. So just to the second part of this one where we're talking about how the, uh, the infinite, the finite player is, uh, looking for, uh, power and yeah. they're wondering, they're tracking who's got the power, who doesn't the infinite player is not competitive with their partner they are collaborative with their mm. partner. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. infinite player creates a vision of who they want to become in the relationship of who you want to become in your dating life, right? So even if you are not fully in a relationship that has a defined vision yet, the invitation here is to create a vision of who you want to become out there in the future that, al that you allow to guide your actions, that you check in with, so that you're not checking in with what they're doing as your point of reference. And this is so key. Most people that I talk to that are experiencing anxiety and dating are tracking the other person's emotional system to determine how they should show up right now, oh rather than allowing yeah. the vision of who they want to become mm -hmm. to, de to determine how they show up right now. And that is what the infinite player is doing, which allows them to be collaborative because as you build a relationship with another person, then you have this third entity called the relationship that you are both using as the North star to guide your actions towards it. Mm. Is that helpful? So good. Okay. So let me see if I have this right. And yeah. I hope you can see these. If you can't see these comments, I can't wait for you to go back and read them because everyone is loving this. Um, the finite thinking is tracking your partners or the other person's emotions and what they're doing and using that to determine what your next move is versus the infinite thinking would be uh, using the vision of how you want, you know, the vision of who you want to become out there yes. in the world or in the relationship to determine your next step. Do I have that right? Beautiful. Yeah.
Okay, uh, got it. Yep. Got it. And then as you're in a relationship and there's more uh, dialogue that happens between the two of you around what it is that you are wanting to create together, you start to use that as the signpost, as the North Star, as the compass to dictate how you show up. Amazing. And I can see how this relates to this topic so much of how to keep uh, your partner's energy coming towards you because it, it can be easy to play those finite games and maybe totally. get someone back for a little while or get them interested yes. for a couple of weeks. Yes. You can't keep that going forever. Thank I mean, you for bringing that up. About, right. Is there anything Thank you, you want to say that on that yeah. how this relates to the topic? Yes. Yes. Just to ground it again, just like you were saying is um, if we're playing a finite game, then we have to keep coming up with finite goals over and yeah. over again. Mm -hmm. uh, so if all of a sudden you've got the person attracted to you or now you're in the relationship, like this is how relationships stay allowed. This is mm -hmm. how when you're with somebody, suddenly it becomes mundane is because the game that you're playing is finite. And you think, well, I, I've got, I think they're attracted to me. I know they're attracted to me. They're, they're with me right now. We're together. We're sharing experiences. I think we're happy, but God, what's going on? I just don't, I don't feel it. Or maybe they're not feeling it anymore. And it, this is why relationships, they'll, they'll peak because it's like the game is won and then it just suddenly plateaus and eventually begins to die. So you, you have to, it is imperative that you bring forth an infinite mindset into your relationships if you want them to last a lifetime. And I'll say this, the people that have relationships that are, uh, that have made it through thick and thin and that are continuing to grow, they are playing the infinite game, whether they realize it or not. It's not like this infinite game thing that I'm, I'm bringing up is suddenly being created here in the moment. It is, it is distinguishing a mechanism that is already working in healthy relationships. Wow, I love that. I think that's amazing. Is there is there anything else you wanted to add here? I know like we're a little short on time today. We didn't want to <laughs> we didn't want this video to go on too long. I'd love to get to some questions at the end, but I, if, yeah, what else do you have to share on this topic? Cool. Yeah, I've got two more yeah. things that I'd like to like to yeah. bring up here that I think will ground this topic. So. Um, another way that uh, playing a finite game uh, happens in relationships is if you are orienting towards relationship as a place where you are primarily wanting to get your needs met. Mm, wow. Okay. So, so good. yeah, primarily wanting to get your needs met. The infinite player is looking at relationship as a platform. They are looking at it as a field that they get to play all out and be their best self. Right? They're not going onto the soccer field because they're like, oh, wow, okay, hopefully I score some goals uh, as the primary uh, experience. They're going out onto, say, the soccer field of life and they're playing because being on the soccer field, they get to express aspects of themselves that allow them to feel alive. It becomes rejuvenating. They leave it all on the field. It doesn't matter whether they win or lose because of who they get to be when they put the uniform on. So yeah. that is how the infinite player orients towards relationship is they it is in an act. The reward is who they become because they get to give uh, their true self. They get to give love. They get to give support. They get to uh, allow and be a conduit for these peak human emotions to come through them and give to another person in the act of doing that is worthy of being in the relationship more so than they're coming with an impoverished point of view being like, God, I hope I'm in a relationship where somebody finally loves me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if I have that right, you're not, the finite thinking would be looking to get most of your needs met or your primary needs met from the relationship only. Yeah. Whereas yes. the infinite player, it's like you said, they like they're on the soccer field just because they like they, you know, the journey and what that brings to them, what they can give, who they can become. Exactly. Right? Do I have that right? Yep, exactly. Okay. And that doesn't mean that you're still not getting your needs met in a relationship. I mean, right. that's something to be tracking. But in, in terms of the hierarchy, you're not putting relationship at, uh, of me getting my needs met at the very top. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing relationship mm -hmm. as a bank account. Rather, you're seeing where you're just constantly withdrawing. You're seeing relationship as a platform where you get to you get to be who you want to be. Okay. I'm as you're talking here, I'm kind of feeling like myself, feeling my way through these concepts. And I can't wait to actually go back and watch this myself because this was yeah. this was so so profound and powerful. Like I just mm. want everyone in the world to <laughs> to understand these concepts. It feels like the finite thinking person would feel more insecure or maybe jealous of other people outside the relationship, whereas the 
what is that the next one or is that is the next one i don't know how you're oh. Helena, I, don't I don't know how you're I, doing this but yeah you're where you're going with your mind it's like this is what i have written down here where we're, where oh, we're going get out so, here. okay well i'll yeah. stop talking then and let you explain it that no please though finish finish that thought i i'll, I'll dive into it i don't okay yeah it. no just see yeah. I just, is that if i'm trying to put myself in a finite thinking place feeling jealous feeling insecure feeling anxious uh feeling like something outside of the relationship could be a threat versus like something that could add to it. Or is that something, I don't know. That's just what came to mind when I heard you talking, but I guess that's, that's, I, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, you're, yeah. I feel like you must be looking at my award document that I what, have. No. <laughs> because here's the next thing that I have is that finite players in relationship are threatened by other men or women. Oh my gosh. Wow. And infinite players see other men and women as inspiration. So, okay. The finite player sees other people out there and that are maybe more gregarious, maybe more confident, maybe have better bodies, younger, fitter, make more money, whatever it is, and they're threatened by it. And an infinite player sees those kind of things and, and sees those kind of people, and they are inspired because they know it's possible. They know it's possible. So they're able to use what they see as inspiration and motivation to embody and take on some of those qualities that they're wanting or work on those qualities and add them to their own menu. Love it. I think that is beautiful. And I'm just like loving all the questions too. Is that the last thing you wanted to share here? Yeah. It, just to wrap that point up, infinite players, okay. infinite players are in competition with themselves. Finite players are in competition with others. Love that. Oh my gosh. I love, you know, you never even have to send me your notes ever. I could just, <laughs> I just felt <laughs> like we were like on the same, same yeah. vibe or something. So I love um, it. would you mind recapping this as I see there's, there's like almost 300 people watching already. Everyone is loving this. Um, mm. I'm going to scroll back up to the top and look for questions. You want to just kind of recap these points while I do that? Yeah, totally. Uh, and I'll just uh, kind of summarize uh, the, everything that we've been talking about here is that the, the finite player is very outcome dependent in relationship, mm. whether that is mm -hmm. you're trying to get someone attracted to you, whether you're trying to get someone to call you, whether someone's pulled away and you're trying to get them back and you're just focused on winning that game, but you're not seeing the larger picture. The infinite player is playing a larger game where the outcome is who they are becoming and how they are playing the game rather than what they are getting from it. Uh, the infinite player has the ability to embrace surprises. Finite players tend to contract around surprises. Uh, okay. They try to control right. surprises, which ends up breaking down intimacy, growth, and magic. Infinite players can weather the storm of the ups and downs that happen inevitably in dating relationships, the uncertainty, where finite players see it as there's something wrong that needs to be fixed. And these ups and downs end up blowing out their nervous system and have them throwing in the towel and saying, I'm never going to love again, or I'm never going to be in a relationship again. So the infinite player has a certain level of anti-fragility and resilience just naturally built into their perspective that allows them to be in any situation. And whether it grows into something beautiful or crumbles apart, uh, they are able to become a more hard open, uh, solid human being. And this is, you know, I'm talking about an ideal here. I realize that. I understand that it might take, it might feel like it's going to take Herculean strength to adopt this mindset, but uh, I'm pointing in a certain direction in this video for you to keep in mind and to add this to life's menu so that when life gets tough, you can begin to examine what kind of thinking that you're in because just switching that slightly can change your life. Amazing. I love everything you said there. Everyone, please click the link in the description and check out uh, Clayton's program, Ch Clayton and Jack Butler, their program, generously yes. offering it totally free uh, for two weeks to my community so you can check it out. And I want to just say this about that program too. Yeah. Just if, if anything that I have talked about today has been um, inspiring, intriguing, I really want to encourage you guys to check out the first two weeks of the program because just like I was talking about in one of the points around creating a vision, that is exactly what we're giving you guys access to in module one of Relationship Ready Becoming the One is we're actually giving release in the whole module for you for free uh, so that you can begin to craft the vision of who you want to be, of what kind of relationship you want. Uh, and we give you tools to be able to do that. And then you can also join us for a live Q&A that's going to happen in the VIP members area as well, as well the next week. So uh, it's it, an opportunity to take this concept that 
uh, maybe is living up here right now that you're being open to and to really begin to bring it down into your body and, and, and embody it over the next six months if you want to continue with us on this journey of becoming Amazing. the one. Yes. Yes. I love that. I've just, I just lost my place here. Um, how about this one? So can we take a couple questions? We have about 10, 15 minutes left. So we'll yeah. take, um, yeah, but join the program. You can get your personal questions answered by Clayton and Jack. Oh my gosh. What a value. <laughs> right. Um, I think in, Jack's still watching too. Right? He's in, in there. The, He's in the comments in somewhere. The yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I get this question all the time. I don't know about you, Clayton. What if a man doesn't want to marry you as he is uncertain due to a previous divorce? Any thoughts there? Yeah. So what if a man doesn't want to marry you as soon as, as so I'm guessing that the, the question behind that is uh, like, what do you do? And so mm -hmm. Diane, I would be really curious as to um, how strong your value is around getting married. Um, I know that personally men and as well as clients I've talked to uh, who have been really burned badly in a divorce and uh, they're going to be on their own healing journey to open up and let go of that baggage. Uh, some might move faster than others. I think the the key thing that I would encourage you to to not do to stay away from is uh, stay away from taking it personally. Yeah. Thinking that if somehow if you were more valuable, if you were more priceless in his eyes, that he would suddenly heal and get over this maybe um, traumatic event. Uh, he's going to move at his own timeline. And the more that you can let control, let go of control of that, and realize that look, this guy is where he's at. And it's really important for you to let go of any hope of changing him and just trust that he's going to be on his own timeline. His timeline might match with yours. It might not. Um, and if marriage is a really important thing to you and that's where you're uh, wanting to, to move your life in the direction of, I think it's important to examine whether or not this relationship is worth holding on to. And also, I think it's it's a good place to be to just take this mindset that we've been talking about and wondering, okay, like, why do I want to get married? You know, I, do I have a really powerful relationship with this guy? And he's just against the institution of marry, marriage. And it, it, am I playing a finite game here? Or what is the deeper reason why I'm really wanting to get married? What does that actually mean to me? And if you can connect with the deeper value system behind that, I think your answer is going to become more clear. I think that's perfect. Yes. And what, here's kind of a related question. What about someone who's not sure where she stands? I'm not sure if we're in a relationship or not. He doesn't communicate. Should I ask him or should I let it go? I love how you uh, do what the finite person would do, what the infinite thinker would do. Yeah. 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 Right. I'm trying to apply this to the question. I, <laughs> so um, should I ask him or should I let it go? Uh, so it doesn't sound like there's really a, um, a you have anything to lose in this situation talking to yeah. him, but yeah. okay. To, to play a infinite game in this scenario, what would, what would an infinite game look like uh, with this man? Well, it might actually be to ask him not for the purpose of hoping that he will say what you want him to say or do what you want him to do, but ask him because I'm imagining that since you're asking this question, I think it's a, I, is it Aisha? Aisha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that, there is an opportunity for you to develop your voice. There's an opportunity here for you to come into greater relationship with your own truth and being able to express that in a situation that feels risky. And that's the win. I think there's going to be some real fruit for you in that conversation. And who knows what will happen? Maybe uh, it, it could wake him up to that he's in front of a woman who really values herself and is not afraid to step into difficult conversations. And at the same time, too, your truth, your honesty, your courage could easily disqualify him out. And he mm -hmm. walks away. And mm -hmm. at that point, what you've got the answer to is that he's not compatible with you. Exactly. Which is a great thing to, to yeah. know that. A lot of people in the chat kind of equating this to law of attraction or making some connections, which I mm. love. Um, I would love to do more live streams on this, actually. Does this infinity have something to do with an abundance mindset? To me, it feels very similar to an abundance. Just like you said, um, you know, the infinite player, so to speak, would in the la for the last question risk kind of letting that connection go because if you're standing in your truth of what you want what feels good to you trusting that there's an abundance of people who would who want that with you as well so what do you think about this relating this to an abundance mindset i think you hit the nail on the head yeah yeah okay i like that question 
Okay, let's see. For the first time, it's, I, it's so small over here on the right. I'm just reading them for the first time when I put them on the screen. For the first time in my life, I'm living in the infinite, enjoying the best new relationship ever. Whatever will be, will be. I'm so happy. Awesome. Yes, I love that. That is so, so great. Happy to hear that is so that. great. Yeah, I've never it. heard this before. Using the vision for your next. Oh, yeah. People are loving using the vision of who you want to be as your next step, not using whatever the person's doing or not doing as, yep. as your next step. I think that's yep. great. Great. Um, this is, people are just loving this topic. Mm. Like we should probably do some more live streams on this sometime, <laughs> right? I'm in. Let's see. How do you get, how do you get help to be a whole healthy partner after experiencing trauma? I get questions like this all the time too. Mm. How do you get help to be a whole healthy partner after experiencing trauma? Yeah, Nicole, great question. And, um, I think this is where it really comes down to uh, one, learning to trust yourself, learning to trust yourself, which means being okay, being single for a period of time where you can start to realize that you are your own source of happiness and that you don't need anybody, uh, any intimate relationship in order to be satisfied, in order to feel grounded, in order to feel safe. That's key um, to not rush it to not rush it either, that you're, uh, whatever it is that you're going through and that you feel is a reoccurring thing that's coming up, uh, it's, it may take some time and that timing, uh, you may have very little control over. Mm -hmm. And I know that people that go through breakups, um, the breakup can be really traumatic. And as much as you might want to will yourself into another relationship, if your heart's not ready, it's not ready. And there's, very little that you can do to move things along. It's just, and just trust the timing that, it, that it's all okay. You're exactly where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And then the mm -hmm. last piece of that too, what I just say is to um, ask for help, ask for help from the outside. Yeah. Um, whether that is joining a program that is designed to help with that specific type of trauma, uh, seeing a therapist, seeing a coach, uh, getting uh, the somebody to act as a mirror for you so they can reflect back to the parts of you that you might be missing that are, uh, more brilliant and already whole and complete that you're not taking. I love everything account. you said there. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, probably the most common question we have in the chat is something like this, how to quit finite thinking in a relationship when you've gotten used to it, how to break through. I'd love mm. to hear any insights you have around that. Yeah, the first one I want to say is join the Becoming the One course mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the entire six module course is designed to bring you into consistent uh finite, consistent, infinite thinking and help you move out of finite thinking. Um, another suggestion too, is to take what you're learning at, from this phone call, from this, uh, this, this video and begin to just keep track of when you are in a finite mindset and then to explore, uh, what would it look like for me to be in infinite thinking? Right. What would it look like if I was thinking about this in an, in an infinite way right now? So essentially to bring some more mindful presence to what's happening in your relationship. And that might be reflective journaling uh, that, again, could be working with a coach. Um, and again, I mean, this is we're talking about shifting a paradigm. Right. We're talking about shifting like a life paradigm. And so I don't want to do any disservice to the answer by saying, oh, it's, it's just simple. You just do that. It's. It, you know, you've taken most likely decades to construct living from a finite mindset and to shift out of that and bring the infinite mindset into a different context takes uh, some practice and possibly some help and support. I love, I love everything you said there. She kind of gave a little follow-up question as I was scrolling through. I saw it. Uh, she says, for example, when your man gets hot and cold, how do you not just make reckless moves without being finite? I mean, mm. just knowing where to stand and not reach out, for example. Great question. Mm. Great question. Yeah. So I'm imagining that the reckless moves are most likely coming from you uh, introjecting his actions as meaning something about you. So um, mm -hmm. if you think about it like this, just if you're just even just play with this question, if what you're witnessing your man being hot and cold uh, has nothing to do with you and everything to do with him grappling with his own um, relationship he has with connection and intimacy, how would you show up? Mm -hmm. Like if that was for sure a fact that it has nothing to do with you and it has everything to do with this man's capacity and ability to stay connected, 
And it's like his spiritual journey that is that he's on, his psychological journey that he's working through, and you're witnessing his growth, which looks like a two-step forward, one-step back process, maybe sometimes a three-step back, two-step forward process. How would you show up to that situation then? Is it possible that you would have more compassion? Um, is it possible that you could also have, and that when I say compassion, I don't mean that you suddenly you're a doormat or like right. you're trying to save him. Um, when I say compassion in a sense, it's like having self-compassion, number one, compassion towards yourself and realizing that it's this is this is not on you. Um, compassion for his journey, but also uh, seeing that maybe his level of connecting, uh, it might not be compatible with where you're at right now, entertaining that possibility. Uh, and also noticing the emotion that comes up, this like rec making reckless moves. Um, when you want to make a reckless move, there's probably an incredible amount of growth that is available to you by being able to sit with that feeling and not act with, not act from it, right? Sit with that feeling, journal, go out and fill yourself up with whatever it is that makes you happy, that allows you to get out of your mind and out of the different possible scenarios of what's happening in a relationship and back into your body and using uh, that feeling as a, a gateway to build a deeper connection with yourself. I'm imagining, and this is the perspective that I hold. I don't think that we attract people into our lives um, randomly. I don't think I don't think that it's it's just all random. I believe that we bring in people that create certain situations in our life that may feel like suffering on the service because there's a deep lesson and deep powerful curriculum that. If we see it with an infinite mindset, it can allow us to up-level our own ability to love them and ourselves. So if you could see that this is possibly a curriculum that you signed up for with this guy and your experience of him playing hot and cold is there's there's some gold in there for you to surface about yourself and learn how to come back to you and be kind with yourself rather than reckless, um, this relationship could be an amazing container for uh, you to become a better a better human being. I totally agree. To oh my gosh. I love everything you said there. I can't, I, I hope everyone just rewinds that part over and over. I get so many questions about the hot, cold guy back and forth. And so I wanted to hear your perspective on it, like in the context of what we're talking about here. Um, is that a way of saying that the relationship platform is where we have our authentic selves ready and we slowly open up to our partners, slowly merge ourselves and our vulnerabilities. And I don't know if that's what we're, if that's exactly what we're saying, but I think that sounds amazing. I think that sounds beautiful. What do you think, Clayton? I think that uh, in terms of authentic selves, um, yeah. I think that the more that you can live from your authentic self, not as something that you're holding back and waiting for permission to give, but like living right from the beginning, authentic all the way through so that uh, the person you're dating knows who they're, who they're dealing with and who they are. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's really powerful. So slowly opening up to our partner and merging ourselves, I would not... Uh, in the way that I define merging, I would not condone merging. I think that connecting is a, is a different word. I think merging in some ways there can be a loss of self mm -hmm. there. Um, and it, yeah, in due time, obviously I think that there's, it might not be obvious, but um, you know, being your authentic self doesn't necessarily mean putting all of your cards on the table and talking about all of your past traumas and wounds and, um, and whatnot. So you get it out on the table to the person. I think there's a certain sacredness that we need to hold our own journeys and share that, um, in due time with people that we know and trust. Yeah, I, I think that's great. There was one question about belief change, but I just lost. There's so many questions coming in that they just kind of disappear after a while. So I'm trying to like manage them as you're talking. Um, yeah. Here it is. Do you think belief change is pretty easy overall, but deeper work like reprogramming? I'm not sure about the second part of that. I don't think that belief change is necessarily... Um, is easy. I think it's simple, but I don't think it's easy because the, here's the here's the tricky thing about beliefs. Um, you often don't know that you have a belief about something. You quite literally think it's reality. So yeah. the the thing with once you realize something is a belief, then it pops itself out from the background and it distinguishes itself as something that you can begin to do something with. But most likely, you're operating. Uh, truly believing that the experience that you're having is fixed, is real, uh, meaning that it's not changeable, that that's just how life is. So if we can turn something into a belief, you can start to, you can start to see that what you're interacting with is a belief, then it becomes uh, a more, I think, simple process to adjust. But even that can take time. 
Okay. Yes. Love it. Love it. Every time I look at this, there's so many, uh, there's so many more, um, follow up. If you're ready and someone comes into your life, that certainly doesn't mean they are ready. So infinite mindset would help frame this. I assume. Yeah, I think so. And that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that might've been the last one. Let me just check. How to remember your advice if infinite mindset is in the midst of my insecurities when I'm spending time with him? How do I apply it? Oh, great question. How do you apply this when you're in the midst of like an, an anxious moment or an insecure moment with your partner? I think uh, giving yourself permission to uh, ask for some time and some space mm -hmm. before reacting. So yeah. um, extending and creating more space between the stimulus and the response. So the stimulus is something happens that you see, you witness your partner do something. So your partner does something in physical reality. You create an interpretation in your mind about what you think that means. That's, a, that's based on a whole set of assumptions and beliefs about what's happening with them and what's happening with you. And then before you take action, take those beliefs and maybe excuse yourself and say, hey, um, I'm feeling a bit triggered right now. And uh, I know that this is, I think that this is my own thing that's coming up. I want to just take a step back and make sure that I'm responding from a place of love and respect for you. So can we talk tomorrow or... Uh, can I give you a call in an hour after I've had some time to be with this? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Jonathan Astley is watching. Hey, Jonathan. We, I did a live stream with Jonathan on uh, hidden male insecurities last time. That was oh, beautiful. A, yes, okay. So everyone is absolutely loving this. I think probably the second most common um, <laughs> comment is I have to go back and watch this a hundred times because this is so profound. I want to fully grasp it. So I'm definitely going to do that. Irina says this is next level really when you realize that it's going to be okay, even if you lose the person, because you you still have you and your own life, you can be yourself, have fun, relax. Yes, yes, yes. Irina, you got it. Yes. You got it. That's the feeling, right? Those words, and that, that's just it. The words can point to this certain state of being, this feeling that's there, where it, you realize you can, you can get through anything that life throws your way with this mindset. Yes, okay, we have just, I think just a couple more very related questions. I know you gotta go in a couple minutes. Um, how do you recognize your, your authentic self and then how to best connect with another person without losing yourself? I thought those two were kind of related. Ooh, wow, okay, got it. So how? So the first one was what? How to best recognize your authentic self? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hmm. That's an interesting question. How to best recognize your authentic self? Um, what would your thoughts be on that one? Do you wanna take a stab at that? How to best recognize your authentic self? I'm just letting you take everything here and I'm just saying <laughs> this, is, this is so much fun for me. Yeah, I would say your feelings are always an indicator. Mm, of well, right. something is amiss. So when you're feeling good, you're on your path. You're connected to your authentic self. I think if you are not feeling good, if something doesn't feel right, uh, if you're in touch with yourself and you know how I talk about being in your heart, connecting to your your true self, your the larger part of yourself, whatever you want to call it, um, it's going to feel really, really, really good. If it doesn't feel good, something's off and you might be kind of living outside of your truth or, or something along those lines. That would be I love that. Favorite. Yeah, that's great. And I would I would say uh, for me, when I feel when I'm recognizing my authentic self, I feel expressed. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, I am able to uh, bring forth the the good, the bad, the ugly, and rather than feel shame or like I have to hide it, like um, I'm okay with it, and that's all that really matters. Other people might react to me in a certain way and have their own stuff that they plaster on me that's really about them, but like I'm okay and comfortable showing up in my skin. Um, Love it. Yeah. I think that's great. Hopefully that answered. Let us know. Over 300, uh, 305, 307 now, people watching, make sure to like the video. Feel free to share with your friends, anyone who you think could benefit from this. Everyone yeah. is loving this, Clayton. I don't know if you can see these comments, but- You know, I've been looking, I've been, so funny. I have been in the private chat seeing oh. nothing because you and I haven't been talking, um, <laughs> but now I see it all on the, the live comment side. Yes, yeah. yes. And I just want to say this, if we have not gotten to your question, you have any more that are coming up. And uh, again, you're wanting to take this uh, mindset, this this paradigm that we've opened up on this video uh, into your life uh, in a really powerful way where you can start to get traction with it. Uh, join us for the two week free trial in becoming the one uh, because the entire premise of the course is, is I would say, you know, we could talk to Jack and see what Jack thinks about this. Maybe he had something different to say, but I, I feel like the course that we've built uh, rides on the undercurrent or the, the backbone of this uh, infinite thinking. 
I totally agree. Yes, the link for that is in the description right now. Also, it's the first comment pinned to the top of the comment section. If you're watching live, you're watching the replay. Um, someone asked, how can you still be an individual and be infinite mode with your partner? Great question, Francis. We, we kind of answer that a little more towards the beginning. I don't know if you're just joining, but um, yeah. it kind of relates to this question too. Or well, I, I guess this, this person might be in a little bit of a different situation, but she says, how long to wait with your partner or potential partner is still in, on their own journey and unable to be within your relationship vision. I, I can be infinite, unconditional and compassionate, but needs not met. I thought that was a phenomenal question. What do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's one of those questions where it's like, th there's so much, um, there's so much power in you figuring that out for yourself. Like I could say to you, hey, you know what, wait six months, that's normal. You know, that, that's yeah. based on statistics and based on, you know, what other people are doing out there in the world, you know, three to six months is this. And, and just if you notice how you feel when I give that answer, it might give a momentary um, piece of relief. But really what it comes down to is you, you, can, you will wait as long as you want to wait. As long as in, in this, what the beauty of the situation that you're in, even though it might feel painful, is that it seems to me, like it is a chance for you to really get in touch with your authentic self, with what your heart wants and really tap into uh, when it's going to be time for you to move on and when you have that clarity. And uh, if you're not quite there yet, then perhaps it's not time to leave. If, okay, and as I'm saying this, and I'm also noticing this, if your relationship with yourself or your relationship with the other person there starts to seep in a certain level of resentment or bitterness or expectations that are causing toxicity in your relationship to yourself or them, that might be a clear indicator that it's time to walk. Beautiful. Amazing. Amazing. And since we do have an extra just couple minutes, what, what did you think? I just mentioned this one, but I think we'll, we'll just end on, we'll end here. We'll end on this one. Okay, great. Yep. An individual and be in infinite mode with your partner. I just thought that was a phenomenal question to end on. Great. Well, and I'd love to hear what your answer is to that too, Helene, if you've got one, but I'll say this first. Um, how can you still be an individual and be in infinite mode with your partner? Um, the two of them are not mutually ex exclusive. Um, infinite mode uh, does not necessarily mean that you are no longer uh, identifying self. Um, it just means that the, the game in which you're playing to uh, out there in relationship is to continue to work on yourself to become a a uh, better, stronger individual that is more connected with their own values. So it might, I'm thinking that you might have interpreted it as if you're in infinite mode with your partner, you're um, uh, maybe just only allowing yourself to have uh, the vision of the relationship guide you. Uh, and I would say that you're also holding on to a the vision of who you wanna be as a partner in the relationship too. I love it. Yes. I, I couldn't have said that better myself. I think that was amazing. And just, I know you have to go in three minutes, literally. So just for the sake of time, I wanted to tell everyone one last time about how they can join your program totally free and get their personal questions answered by you and Jack Butler, the amazing coach who everybody loves. I've seen all the amazing comments yeah. about Jack chat yeah. too. Um, yeah. Let's talk about that. The links in the description, just any last right. words on this topic. Yeah. Yep. So the course again is becoming the one, uh, it's uh, relationship ready, becoming the one it's a six module course. We will release the modules, uh, once a month over the course of the next five and a half, six months. Uh, you get an opportunity right now to join the program for, uh, free for a 14 day free trial. After that, it's 97 a month. Uh, if you'd like to continue, uh, and we dive deep into creating the vision of this conscious relationship that you might be wanting to create in your life, the vision that you have with yourself, dealing with your own inner critic, that self-talk that seems defeating, that may kind of undermine you or that you perceive as sabotage. Then we move into reprogramming old childhood patterns and helping you come more in greater contact with the, the truth of who you are as this whole and complete person and help you operate and stand and communicate from that place. We have a module where we move into the male mind and we go deep into insecurities of the male mind. We go deep into the things that men are thinking the ways that men's minds actually work uh, that have them show up certain ways in relationships that you might be taking personally. And then we go into different ways of communicating. We even give different scripts of communicating through critical make or break moments. Um, and it then from there continues to graduate into deeper and deeper levels all the way up into some of 
uh, this, this spiritual mindset one can have uh, to embody and live all of the principles that we teach over the course of the six modules. Amazing, amazing. And they do get, they do have an opportunity to do be on live streams and Facebook lives or group yep. with you guys and get their personal questions answered, right? Twice a month, yeah. twice a month. Wow. Uh, yep, we're going to be jumping on once you're in the Facebook group. Uh, we'll be answering questions. We'll be doing additional teaching based on what kind of situations you guys are bringing to the table. And in some cases, even maybe bringing some people on live to do some live coaching so you can really get in front of us and have an experience uh, that will move you forward in your love life. Oh my gosh, that is just priceless. I, if you guys have ever had a coaching session with with Jack or Claire, I mean, I can just say even from a personal note, I, I hope it's okay to like say this, but like back with, towards probably like the end of end of last year, when I was going through a really hard time. I was mm. so depressed going through. I remember we had a call. It was just it was supposed to be about work or something else, and 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 you just the advice that you gave me was unlike anything I've ever heard before. It literally mm. changed the trajectory of my of my entire life like literally mm. i've never had an experience like that so if you guys have an opportunity to do coaching with clayton and jack i would say oh my gosh it, it is like priceless and they're offering you, it to you totally free so yeah i cannot yeah. recommend this enough like i think the world of you guys you're thank amazing thank you so much yeah, yeah. And thank you guys for um for what there's so many great comments watching all the way to the end someone asked why is helena so white and i was trying not to laugh <laughs> Look at that, i'm pretty white right now huh? even get outside more maybe i think the camera's just a little foggy that's it yeah gonna, maybe it's yeah <laughs> we'll go with that well or maybe you're like really tan right now i'm so tan reason. yeah with yeah. my norwegian body right <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's loving you oh my gosh everyone's saying the spiritual demon so um, you guys are amazing. We love you so much. So uh, let's let's just close out here. Please go join everyone. Let me know who's joining the program. Let us know down below in the comments once this is over. We'd love to hear your, your feedback on it. The feedback I've heard from people who joined say it has changed their life. I mean, mm -hmm. literally like bro not broken them down, but it built them up into a whole new person and there's no going back. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the, what I've heard, the feedback from your program. Yeah. Check it yeah. out. Still um, offering it totally free for the first two weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Clayton. Let's definitely do this again. Thank you for having we me. We have more time. Yes. Yep, and who wants absolutely. to see Clayton back? Let us know. Give us some um, ideas for new topics. I'd love to have you back on. And Jack, yeah. you too, if you're still watching. Um, mm. we, I'd love to have both you guys back on soon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you for your intuitive question asking and, and dialoguing with me. It's, it's always a pleasure coming on here and uh, discussing with such an intelligent human. Oh my gosh. Thank you so yeah. much. Yes. And all you guys watching to love your questions and comments. Have a great weekend. We love you guys so much and uh, we will see right. you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.